I never thought I'd uh, be making a video like this, but if you do follow me on Facebook or TikTok, you would have seen by now that we very suddenly lost Champ. It was just a normal Monday morning, six o'clock, I go down the yard. Um, I was just feeding breakfast and I got to Champ stable and he was laying down. He doesn't usually lay down. He, I know he lays down at night, but you don't ever catch him laying down. So he was laying down, which wasn't common. So I gave him his breakfast and he stood up and he started putting his head in his bucket. And um, I felt him and he just felt a little bit warm, not hot but a little bit warm, so I took his rug off and changed that. But he was still nosing around at his food, and I just carried on. I messaged Steve, I knew, message saying, Champ's not well. And I just carried on doing all the horses, knocking out hay nets, everything as usual, while still checking in on Champ. I'd rung the vets, they were on their way, but we had no major cause for concern at that point. So she was just finishing up the job she was already on, then she was going to come straight to us. So I'd mucked out some of the stables, got down to Champ's stable, and um, I put him in the washroom so I could muck him out. I'd kept everyone in so it wasn't upsetting him. Um, so yeah, so I put him in the washroom to muck him out. I didn't tie him up, I shut the gate and just left him loose. So just in case he went down or anything, he wasn't restricted. And whilst I was mucking him out, everything was normal. He'd eaten his dinner from the night before, all his hay had gone, normal amount of poo, everything. No, nothing wrong. Whilst I was mucking him out, he did go down in the washroom. Um, but he didn't roll on up and just laid down. And I got to him and I got him up and I was walking around the yard. By this time, I'd then rung Steve, because Steve's not very good at answering messages, but he will answer the phone. So I rang Steve and just the second that he answered the phone, Champ went down on the yard and started rolling. So I was in tears. Steve couldn't understand anything I was saying. But he knew I was at the yard and I was on my own. So someone then gave him a lift and brought him to the yard. By this time, the vet had just arrived. But again, she checked his heart rate, his temperature, done an internal. Yes, he was colicking, but there was no major cause for concern. We flushed him, uh, put fluids in him. She gave him some sedative and some busk pan to settle his colic. But there was no major cause for concern. She said that she'd come back, she wants to see him again come the afternoon, regardless if he was better or not. So it was left as that, not serious, just take him for a walk every hour. It's fine, not a problem. So we didn't think it was too bad. Steve left and went back to work. He had rung our middle son because do Adam doesn't usually work on a Monday. So he'd rung Adam to come down to me. Um, in between this, I had, while Steve was there, I had gone and picked up Lewis from the house because I knew we'd be at the yard all day, just checking on chance. So I'd already collected Lewis. Steve got back to work. Adam had come down to help me because if Chad goes down, I'm not strong enough to pull him back up on my own. So Adam was down and we were just walking him 10 minutes every hour. Champ was getting worse and he just kept going down. So I rang the vet back up and she comes straight back out to us. And uh, she gave him, some, by this time the sedative had worn off, so she gave him some more sedative checked him over and um, he was alright, he seemed alright. We put him out in the Berkshire Perina, so if he went down it wasn't concrete. She said that he had slightly more gut sounds, 
his heart rate had slowed down just a little bit and he didn't look as pale. So it was all good. Then she did say to us she could not give him any more drugs. So if he got worse, the only option was to make the decision to put him to sleep or take him to Horsey Hospital. So she was just telling me all the information I needed to know. Because he shouldn't have been getting worse on the drugs that he'd been given. And then he put his head down and he started trying to eat the links. Shouldn't have been doing it because he was sedated. But it was the first sign that we thought that he was improving a little bit. So I said, oh, we're just going to time. Let him have time. We were there with him. We could stay at the yard all day long. It wasn't a problem. So she, she left. And um, her little while, he kept going down, but he wasn't rolling. He was just resting. We were allowed to let him do that because he would be exhausted after all. By this time, my oldest son and his girlfriend as well had turned up and the kids' friends. It's normal for the kids' friends to turn up. They're all brilliant and they help us. Um, then Cham started just getting worse and he just kept going down. So I rung the vet back up and she said now the only option was to either make the decision for him or take him to Horsey Hospital. And we decided to take him to the hospital. My eldest son had rung his granddad to get the bigger horse box down because we've only got the three and a half tonne. So the space in that is not very big, it's no bigger than a stable. So I brought the bigger horse box down so we could take the whole partitions out. Because you are warned, if he goes down in the horse box, you cannot stop. You must keep driving to the hospital and the vets will deal with him there. So we got the bigger horse box out. So um, if he went down, he had plenty of space. And the vet came as well. So they had to heavily sedate him to make the journey. So the bigger horse box has got a really steep ramp to it. And they heavily stated champ and then my two eldest boys had to physically lift him and push him up the ramp because he just couldn't do it. So we got him over to Horsey Hospital. I followed behind in the car and flew him. And they immediately took him straight in we done an ultrasound scan on him, which showed that he had an enlarged colon and that it wasn't a twisted gut, but where this colon was so enlarged that it moved his internal organs about because they weren't where they should have been. And they had to do some um, test on him, peritoneal tap or something they done on him, I can't remember what it's called, where they inject his, uh, take some fluid, go in his side and take some fluid out. So we waited for the results of that. And they test for different levels of stuff and one level was dangerously high, which was not a good sign at all. But a second level was also very high, which somehow makes them have more hope there was talks that he'd have to be admitted um, to be on intensive fluids and pain management, which was fine. Actually, I've got no queries about that. Take him in, whatever. There was one more blood test they needed to do. And they'd done that. And the results come back that he had internal bleeding and there was no saving him whatsoever. We had to put him down. <laughs> Most heartbreaking day of my life that I tried so hard and I couldn't save him. And he could just come out of the blue the night before. He was there was nothing wrong with him. Nothing to make me think that he was ill. He'd done everything and I couldn't save him.